Fuck, I got him. Now, Jake, now. Welcome to your doom. Your doom. A couple's late night makeout session is cut short when they hear the report on the car radio about an escape killer who has a hook for a hand in the vicinity. The girl insists on being driven home immediately. Upon arrival at her house, the boy discovers a bloody hook hanging from the passenger car side door. <laughs> Welcome to uh, episode 99A. This 99. is uh, super, super spooky. Super episode. spooky. Super. We got to really hit it for Renee. Super spooky episode. And I've got super my Scooby Doo outfit on. Yeah. I uh, I didn't know we were dressing up. I didn't um, either. It's all I, I got am here. Adam. Uh, surprise you, fuckers, Riley. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm Jake Scrappy. Yeah. Do uh, bossy. <laughs> yeah. See, it was it was me the whole time. If it wasn't for you meddling kids, you would have figured it out. True. <laughs> I'll be Renee Daphne. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll solve the mystery of the Starbucks school. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Hey. So. <laughs> so what are we talking about today? Yeah, what are we talking about? The hook handed killer. The origin of the hook handed. Yeah. The killer. origin of the hook handed yes. killer. Urban legend. Yeah, and actually, it's a true story. It's based off of the 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 Texarkana uh, Phantom Murder slash Moonlight Murderers. Right. So this is the I'm sorry. This is a cautionary tale to uh, to stop uh, teenage girls getting fucked in Lovers Lane. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not even about the uh, the abortion law. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the hook down, down part. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what happens you drive way too fast in the abortion <laughs> clinic. <laughs> That's when he had the doctors chase you with a hook hand. <laughs> Come back. Yeah. It's only 300 bucks. Yeah, it was two for one that day. So. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's get started here today. So Texarkana, shockingly, is on the border of Texas and Arkansas. I kind of like this efficiency. There's there's no Whisk, Illinois. Yeah, <laughs> so like, I mean, you know, yeah, like like uh, St. Louis is too uh, vague. Mi- do you know what Wisconsin? Wis- do you know Minnesotan what Wisconsin does roll off the tip of the dick? Yeah. So anyway, um, this is 1946, okay. right after World War II. Okay. And after the war, no one wants any like stressful stuff. So entertainment. Yeah, we want to relax a little. Yeah, bit. they want to have fun. They want to you know stay out all night. Depression, war. Now what? <laughs> Sex, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Teenage sex, trying to stay out after nine. No, oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's staying a World out late. War II joke. <laughs> so, it's gonna be hard to be a German, like the year after the war. Just be like, I know, I know. I'm sorry. No, I hit sauerkraut too. You know. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Heitler. Heitler. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, I'm from Paraguay. <laughs> Okay, Argentina? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so anyway. So Texarkana. Texarkana. So Texarkana is much like the town that we are currently in. It's only about 50,000 people, so it's not a big town. It's not a little town. It's pretty big for back then, though, don't you think? Yeah, like, but I mean, it's still not a metropolis. It's not a New sure. York City or a Los Angeles, but it had a reputation because any cities that are on the state line, crime is rampant because, see, you can just cross the state line and then, you sure. know. You do get the w- dance in front of the cops, be like, yeah. "Come get me," you know. Yeah, exactly. So this well, town, this is at the tail end of the uh, rob the bank in a suit days. Yeah, yes. you know where you just all Aha! fancy. Yeah, I was like, "We write your name on the wall with a gun." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a John Mulaney joke. What are bullets free? Oh yeah. <laughs> so this town had, you know, some crime, and you know, it was regular, and sure. it was known as Little Chicago, and. It, was but it, it's still like Texarkana, though. So it's like Little <laughs> Chicago is like, it's like Capone, but with like whatever like the hick version of syphilis is, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like Gout. whatever you get from. <laughs> yeah, no, that's like that's King's disease. Yeah. Whatever you get from like fucking cattle, I think. It's just hookworm and yeah, uh, sure pinworms. Still syphilis. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, it's just hot syphilis. <laughs> so it was described as a veritable magnet for the criminally inclined. All right. So, but the other thing too is it's not unusual in this area to have like regular police shootouts. So that wasn't anything that people batted their eyes at. Sure. But at the same time, it's kind of like if you do good, you won't ever face any kind of. Was that a quote from the newspaper? Not to take you back, but what is a veritable. Yeah, it is a quote from the newspaper. A veritable magnet magnet for the criminally inclined. It sounds like they're just trying to like. Make fun of dumb criminals without them knowing. 
It sounds like bloy kind of. No, yeah. it's like no, it's like a, like wow. We'll use words with lots of syllables, and then the dipshits won't understand. Yeah. We're roasting them. Yeah, it's a lot of rapscallion riffraff in this <laughs> yeah. town. They're like, that sounds fancy. Ah, all right, right tomfoolery yeah. sounds cool. Top all of right. that morning to you. Hit them with some monos- monosyllabic terms or really insult sure. them. Yeah, you hear that we're a uh, veritable Bad. magnet down here. <laughs> <laughs> the criminally inclined. So. Okay, so stupid. J- Jimmy <laughs> so. and Mary, they're on a double date. The double date's over. He drops off his brother, but he's not done with Mary just yet. I mean, this means Sounds he had like blue balls. Yeah, getting started. Yeah, blue yeah. balls. Yeah, okay. Exactly. <laughs> it's hot coffee. Yeah. <laughs> so they whole po- brother get out now, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> so they right. pull over in a lover's lane. Where are these? <laughs> Country like, roads that okay, nobody. Sure. You've never been so on a, a lover's lane? lane? Yeah. No, I'm not cool. I hear you like it in cars. Yeah, I know. Karma Sutra. Okay. Yeah, as a little callback for listeners, we found out Renee is a uh, a, a felon, okay. <laughs> basically. A Karma Sutra enthusiast. Yeah, yeah. she's a carny. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, anyways, they're parking on a desolate road where they were quote unquote looking at the stars. That's necking. romantic. They were necking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was looking at the stars. There was some <laughs> brown star on her back. Maybe there was like heavy petting or whatever they said. Anyways, so there a man approached them and he was wearing a pillowcase with like rudimentary eye holes cut into the pillowcase. So that's kind of freaky, right? Probably got no. He's probably got no. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, peripheral. He's got no peripherals, <laughs> right? He's like a moose. You know, you just get, you move. You move laterally. This would be fine. Just stay behind him. <laughs> hey, where'd you go? <laughs> like, eye holes in a yeah. in a potato. In a pillow, ba- no, this, a pillowcase. A pillowcase. That's not even. Yeah. That's impractical. Uh, okay. Okay. So sure. he's wearing the pillowcase. Sure. Anyway, he says, but, "I don't want to kill you, so just do what I say." All right. Standard. That's on. Standard bad yeah. guy shit. Yeah. He told Jimmy that he has to pull down his pants. <laughs> Kill me! <laughs> yeah, Just, I see you've been looking at the stars. Now I want to see your uh, ass. <laughs> you might, okay, that's a good one, Adam. That's a good one. Yeah, you might not want to kill me, but I don't want to live. So. <laughs> well, Jimmy is not going to take his pants off, but Mary says, "Just do what he says." So he takes his pants off. You take your pants off. <laughs> <laughs> Girls don't pants. wear pants in nineteen forty six. That's Petty, a real chivalrous move. Like you don't want to you don't want to rape her. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, you sure? No. Okay. So, anyways, we he, can uh, we can each you know front. Uh, anyway, <laughs> just spitballing here. I got a pillowcase. <laughs> okay, so the pillowcase guy gets him to take his pants down. Hell yeah! And then he tells Mary <laughs> to take Jimmy's wallet out, like out of the out of the. Bunched up pants. Yeah, on the so I mean, bunched up pants. Can I just say this though? Like, like tactically speaking, like I think dropping a dude's drawers down to his ankles. I mean, this is Texas Santa. Mean, you got no, cowboy I'm saying, boots like, on he too. Can't well, run. Is, he can't run after sure. you. I mean, you're, you just you just hobbled him. I yeah. mean, so like we're joking about it, but it's kind of like kind of smart. Not a bad idea. Yeah. How long does it take to pull your pants up? I, uh, like seconds matter. So, okay, sure. We're right. in battle right now. Okay. Okay, so he takes his pants off. That's just so you can't move side to side, so you don't lose them in the pillowcase. <laughs> Mary takes his wallet out, and there's one dollar in the. Wallet. I mean, can we just talk about this though? Like, I'm I'm thinking like if I'm out on a date with a girl I'm trying to impress, and I get told to take my pants down with, by like an armed gunman or something, I'm be like, and then you right, have one dollar. Right. Listen, oh, yeah, you've heard of fear that. shrinkage, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was in the pool. Yeah. Like, like, bro, bro, I was being robbed. Yeah, yeah. Just, bro, let me fluff. Just, yeah. Come on, man. You yeah. got to drop on me. You're making just... me pay for this date twice. Yeah. <laughs> so he's not happy about the dollar, so he tells her to get her purse, but the problem is she doesn't have a purse. She's okay. relying on Jimmy for the funds. Oh, well, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's... Okay, so what he does is he, like, pistol whips her in the back of the head. Yikes. Yeah. So she starts bleeding and he tells her to run. So she just picks up and starts running. And then he goes, not that way, the other way. It's like, it sounds like every scary movie with a blonde. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my God. I always get suspicious of these, like the victims. I'm like, she's in on it at this point. Like she took his dollar. She <laughs> ran the wrong way. No, she's a dipshit kid. So she, ta- oh, so she takes off in the way that the, you know, pillowcase guy tells her. Yeah. So then he starts beating up Jimmy within an inch of his life. And so he thinks that Jimmy is dead. So then he goes after her. Mm -hmm. Now, what she's done is she ran up the road and she saw a car. But it was like, she was like, help me, help me. But it was, the car was empty. Classic urban legend shit. Yeah, yeah. So then she starts running. 
In the meantime, Jimmy has gotten up and he's trying to flag down a car to like, you know, say, hey, hey. So you he's know. not dead. No, he's not dead. But he is pantsless. Yeah. So no one's stopping. Yeah, no one's stopping for like a bloody pantsless dude. Yeah. Well, you are exactly right. When people stop, they do not want to let him in the car. They're like, uh, we'll call the cops for you. And then yeah, they you just ride on the hood. <laughs> yeah. Sure, yeah. You've got a hood ornament or a seat, as I call it. <laughs> yeah. So whoever pillowcase guy is, he like attempts to, I guess, rape Mary. But she said, if you're going to do that, just go ahead and kill me. Well, right when she says that, Headlights come by, and pillowcase guy, he flees. Sure. He takes off. Okay. And so somebody that whoever Jimmy, you know, they called the police, and so that's who found Mary running down the street like a, you know, chicken with her head cut off. Sure. And so that's, you know, they go to the hospital, and the police are like, tell us what happened. You know, who's the suspect? Well, here's the problem. Mary said that the guy who attacked them is black. Hmm, okay. But Jimmy said the guy's white. Well, Jimmy only saw him with a pillowcase on. I'm assuming they both only saw him with the pillowcase. Well, no, <laughs> he was trying to rape her, and I mean, she probably got. She could tell by his eye color. By his dick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking that. I was like, I'm not saying that. Yeah. But I appreciate you took the fucking <laughs> Just, low road. You piece of shit. Well, well the, no, I'm Jake, sorry. Jake, I'm going to stop you right there because whatever he was attempting to penetrate with was not a penis. <laughs> it was something hard. Cold and steel. <laughs> the hook hand. Is it, you never heard of Lexington Steel? <laughs> <laughs> so, Wait, hold on, yeah. listeners, stop at Google Lexington Steel. Yeah, he, not uh, at work though. He's, uh, <laughs> not safe for work. He's like a John Henry figure. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so steel driving man. <laughs> yep. <laughs> when this incident, right, wait, he okay. uh, he. Uh, he shoved something in her? I guess he was using <laughs> so, a surrogate penis, I guess. A surrogate. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like a stunt cock? Like he gun fucked her. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so, that, that, like, I didn't want to say it, but you said it, yeah, okay? He, he, was a, he fucking snub nosed her, or whatever you call it. So. <laughs> okay. Listen, some of us have a snub nose, some of us got dirty hairy. <laughs> it's all how you use it. It's how you use it. <laughs> yeah. Get that, what you fucking deserve. So. <laughs> okay, I'm not, okay. I'm anyways, not going to go and do that. Anyways, but, anyways. Keep it going. So. Because they didn't have any other evidence, they just have their word, and we got one white, one black. So I mean, can we just talk about it's like 1946, like police skills, though? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like it's like, hmm. <laughs> well, I drew a chalk outline. <laughs> so you tell me you were standing right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the grass is bent. <laughs> yeah. like, no, he's yeah. not here right now, so sorry. It's like, it's gotta yes, be so much easier to get away with the crime back then. Yeah, you just gotta not be there when yeah. it's happening. Yeah. Like. That was the extent of their evidence for that first incident. So no one died with that? No one died. Oh, so he just got beat Jimmy, up? Jimmy got his head stoved in, but he didn't die. Okay. Jimmy got a gun. No, I mean, what's her name? Mary Janie. got a gun. No, keep singing it. Okay, so like well, it. She got a gun, but <laughs> it's not the way you th- you're you're saying. You smashed like two songs together. And then <laughs> I know, <you> I know. <laughs> butchered them both. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I do. Okay. What would Jenny do? <laughs> so exactly three weeks to the day later... March 24th. Okay. Um, so 21 man... days later. Okay. It, no, no. It's <laughs> Don't not, even try it's to make a that a joke. I'm okay. not. Okay. That's 28 days. I am saying it's his cycle. So. <laughs> You're right. It's his cycle. Yeah. And it is the moonlight murders. So oh. a man, a gentleman, was okay. driving to church and he saw a car parked on the side of the road. Well, okay. on the way home, the same car is parked there. So he thought that was a little sus. A right, car is rare. <laughs> <laughs> Cars on country roads are rare. I don't sure, know. Sure, I guess if you live, it makes sense. In a rural area sure. where you don't see cars. Okay, so he pulls over. He thought it actually the first time he passed him that he saw two people sleeping in the car. And so he, so he stopped the first time through. No, he didn't. But he the st- second time he's like, these people better get up and get out of here kind right. of thing. So he pulls over and then he realized. Wait, is not- it hot? Is he worried about like? No, because it's March twenty fourth. But it's Texas. That's true. So I'm just, I don't know. I'm just saying, like, why would you worry about people sleeping I, in I a car? I think just like it's... just being a busybody, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Fuck sure. face. Sure. Okay. All right. Okay. So he realized that it's they're not sleeping; that they're actually dead. Okay. And so when the police got How there, how do you do that? Because I guess maybe he saw just the blood. Just yelling. Well, oh, I mean, they were shot. hold on, just yeah, wait. They were shot. They were shot. Oh. One of the guys, the back of one of the guys' head looked like scrambled eggs, probably. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's like smoked three times. And, and honestly, you don't sleep well when you're like that. You do. Yeah. 
I guess he sleep, sleeps eternally yeah. after that. So anyways, so when the police got there, they found out that the victims were, okay, this is kind of horrifying, but 29-year-old oh, Richard Griffin. Okay. And his girlfriend, 17-year-old. Oh, yeah, Steven Tyler I numbers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah. Okay, so 29-15. Okay. Not great, but, you know, it's a 29-17. 17, 17 but, yeah. Oh, t- it's, you know, it's a f- I'm not condoning, but it's like it is the South Texarkana. 19. Okay, yeah, so, you're right. I mean, it's Texarkana. Like, okay, so Richard was shot three times execution style with a 32 caliber bullet. What's execution style? Is it like... In the back of the head. Just Yeah, just like... Oh, like... On the knees, yes, pop, pretty much. Okay. Yeah, pop, yeah, yeah. pop, pop. Okay, so then open times. up the door. Yeah, it's three real. times. What are bullets free? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> well, I'm sure back then they were like a penny each or something. That's true. Okay, so and then Polly Ann, she they suspect that she was killed on a blanket outside of the car, execution style, and then whoever did it dressed her back up and then put her in the car, but she's in the back seat where her man was in the front seat. So was this a rape? Did he? That's a good question. Did he snub her too? That's 1946 police. Um, yeah, 1946 police decided to not do an autopsy. She was embalmed. Why? Because they, I don't know. They embalmed her right away. So what, whether or not she was raped, we'll never ever know. Um, excuse my ignorance. <laughs> do they take out the Gwyneth candle? In an embalming, or does it just like there's a pussy still there when they bury it, or is that scooped too, like ice creamed out? Like, you know what? That is a good question, right? Or, <laughs> you don't, you don't, you don't howl the whole pumpkin when you're embalmed, right? Somebody call a coroner or a mortician in here and let's ask. What's happening right now? I'm sorry. <laughs> Do they Tony, ha- do Tony, they, or we got okay. the fact checker. Yeah, on we got it. somebody okay, looking around. into it. But meanwhile, I, I don't know how you do it. It literally <laughs> just, took okay. both of them from the car to the funeral home and had them embalmed, and then they were buried. So there was no in between. Well, it's hot spot. back then. Yeah, you know, refrigeration was tough. <laughs> it's Texas. Yeah. Okay. Texarkana. <laughs> yeah, that's no better. Yeah. That's I hard. like this naming system. I think this should be Texaco. You <laughs> know, it should be <gasps> Talabama and all that. Yeah. Like, is that next to it? Yeah. The to, other. To Louisiana. <laughs> The other problem was it had rained all night, so whatever footprints or maybe fingerprints outside the car would have been washed away. Sure. And then they never preserved the crime scene. Like, all the cops that came, they just kind of trampled over. Yeah, no chalk outline. Yeah, there was no chalk (laughs) outline. Oh, it'd be so easy to be a cop back then. You can just conjecture. Yeah, they did. In your big Texas hats and shit like that. All right, so ask a funeral director embalming question. Wait, is this a website? <laughs> what what a happens to the website? genitals during embalming? Nothing. The embalming process does not require nor include the removing of any or all internal organs. We only remove the fluids, i.e. blood, fluid in the lungs, and replace them with embalming fluid. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. There could still be some swimmers. You know what? Let's <laughs> so, double his pay right now. Yeah. <laughs> What's two times zero? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I know why Ed Gein was doing it. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. fresh box down there. <laughs> so three weeks later, April 14th. Oh, again, three weeks? Okay. Okay, three, so exactly it, three weeks. This is before like, the whole forensic thing where they're yeah. building profiles? Course, yeah. Well, they. I'm so glad you asked. Oh, okay. They, is this what started it? They will build me. This is my one of the first cases they actually built a profile. Cool. On. I watch a lot of crime stuff. Okay, so okay. But I'll get to that in a minute. A man's body was discovered on the side of the road, and he was shot four times. Okay, I have a question. Hmm. Was there anything cold and steel like shoved in his vagina? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. Okay, moving on. Moving on. So it's Palm Sunday. <laughs> The night of, picture it, okay? The night before. This is a good voice. Keep going. Yeah. I'm with you. 17-year-old Paul Martin borrowed his brother's new car from Kilgore, Texas. Wait, where? Kilgore, Texas. Well, of course this fucking happened. (laughs) Like, (laughs) Kilgore? No, that's where he's from. I'm saying the name of the. T- yeah, I know, I know. Go, okay. okay sorry. Okay, so Kilgore. He wanted to go on a date with 15 year old Betty Jo Booker. That's 17, 15. Well, right? I just want to say, like, you're definitely getting to second base if the girl's name that you're dating, if her middle, if her initials are BJ. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey, hey, Jake. I Jake. Got, I got to push I have back. a question. <laughs> yeah. what's, your, what's your grandma's initials? My grandma is Betty Jo. <laughs> But hell yeah! I remember one time that all, Hi, all her friends, all her friends call her BJ. I'm like, <laughs> hell yeah, they do. Fuck. 
She's also from Texas. Some some so, nicknames are. Wait, just, what's her last is name? Is her last name Bussy? <laughs> no, it was uh, Barnes. <gasps> B Booker Barnes. Ball same job. initials. So same <laughs> initials. <laughs> Fucking BJB. <laughs> and honestly, pri- hi, hi, probably Molly. the right time frame. <laughs> <laughs> Almost probably exactly the right time frame. Yeah. She probably heard about this and is like, watch out for uh, I'm going to b- Lover's Lane. <laughs> yeah, Switching she probably didn't go now. to Lover's Lane. Yeah. <laughs> I, should, I should get a hold of her, talk to her, be like, do you remember this time period? This would actually be a real interesting thing. I yeah. should call her, but yeah. ask her about it. Yeah. And call her now. See if they scoop out pussy. <laughs> be like, right? yeah. Be like, Grandma, <laughs> BJ, it's, well, is it? Well, I'd be like, if you remember the Moonlight Murders or whatever it was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. She'd be like, only Hicks live in Texarkana. <laughs> Who gives a fuck what happens to them? They're the worst of the worst over there in Texarkana. Yeah. Okay, so she, he wanted to go on a date with her, but the problem is is that, you know, she's only 15, so she's like, I got to ask my boyfriend if I'm allowed to go on a date with you. What? What? <laughs> well, she had a boyfriend. BJ. Short answer. <laughs> here's, here's the thing. So they're stupid <laughs> because no is the answer to, uh, hold on, I got to ask real quick. Hey, do you mind if I go on a date with this guy Does but you know what t- she did call her boyfriend and ask him and he said sure that's all right that's so i don't get it tex arcana different, I time. so like, different times i guess, yeah. I guess. All right. well i think that she felt guilty because he was like a longtime family friend that's uh, yeah all right sure okay so she but that's a weird leverage to pull sure okay so she said sure i can go out with you but i'm playing the sax at the VFW tonight. Dude, how cool is this chick? Is this Lisa Simpson as a teenager? <laughs> like At the VFW? Yeah, yeah they do she... bingo there, dude. Yeah, nice. for, <laughs> for elderly people. Yeah. Lisa plays. So she thought that they would be able to go to like a midnight show yeah, Her movie. And Bleeding Gums Murphy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> nice 90s Simpsons references. We haven't done that know, in a while. No, it's yeah. been a while. Okay, so come, he shows up to the VFW. Okay. Midnight comes, she's not done. Not done playing the saxophone. No, at midnight she was playing. Out. She was saxing all at night. Fifteen years old. <laughs> uh, well, isn't that like? I mean, sax is just what guys want, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guys only want sax. Uh, I read the newspaper wrong. Well, you know what? I was I th- paying for uh, sex. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered. S- yeah. You know what? Just play your song. Let me you just know wait. what? Let me just <laughs> wet your reed. Yeah. No, 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 Chris Hansen. I want to hear the fifteen-year-old play sax. <laughs> yeah. Do you know yeah. what? <laughs> oh, the typos. There was probably another fifteen-year-old playing sax nearby. Bill Clinton. You ever heard of him? Yeah, little, uh, little rock, little rock, little rock. Yeah. Yeah, this is probably the right time frame too. It was. It really was. Okay. Okay. So it's probably the fucking <laughs> snub nose killer. <laughs> <laughs> Filler and killer, keep going. Well, it's you know the cigarette thing, you know that makes it's all coming together now. What cigarette thing? With Monica. Oh, the cigar. Yeah, cigar, cigar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so anyways, skipping over cigar. I mean, like since we're here, like that's that's some there's something about Bill Clinton that I I it's kind of a joke, I guess. Let's just run with it. Um, Do you remember stuff when you're younger, and then when you're an adult, you see the same things, and you have a different reaction when like when I was younger every day. When I was younger and the whole Monica Lewinsky thing broke, I remember thinking like, ah, that's, yeah, you can't control the finish, right? Now as an adult, and I'm like, you just fired it on her dress? (laughs) (laughs) That's rude. Like, dude, you were sitting at a a desk that probably had Kleenex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like a little badge. Like, I wish she had an eager mouth. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) I always, like, I always always hoped, like, the next, the next meeting Bill took was probably the advancements in testing and DNA. And he's, he would just be like, Monica, can you come back in here, please? Yeah. (laughs) I feel like he's from Arkansas, so he probably doesn't know anything about DNA testing. Hold on a sec. When was the strudel invented? Because um, like he basically treated her like one. Well, that's a, that's the thing with <laughs> the cigar. Why would she? Yeah, I mean, it's like with the cigar. I, I hate that you reminded me of that, but like he basically like whetted it. Yeah, dude, he fucking <laughs> treated her like a humidor. Yeah, <laughs> so, he, like <laughs> like like, uh, like that gal that felt something like cold and steel. She yeah. felt something cold and Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a white dude from Arkansas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so why it was weird. That. It's fucking commander in chief, man. Okay, <laughs> so. I got it. I have a funny story. Okay. So when I was a senior in high school, I took AP government. I know, shocking. So this better top the cigar in the. This will. Okay, it okay. will okay. stop. It'll top it. Okay, sure. I was that cigar. <laughs> no. So we were supposed to go take a trip to Washington D.C. and like meet with different government representatives this sounds dangerous like a safari this like, is my mom 
took me to get my hair cut and insisted I get the Rachel from Friends. I feel, like, I feel like you're on the first part of the journey of the Epstein Island. Yeah, <laughs> you know, just like we got to get the we got to get the get her the Rachel. She'll okay. get viewed. Yeah. But yeah. I guess no one wants the Phoebe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, or the Ross. Fortunately, <laughs> I got the Rachel at Great Clips. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Ross. <laughs> so Hello. I ended up. How looking, you doing? <laughs> so no, no, no. I ended up looking like Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> and you know, I had the baby were face. You, were you a devil in a blue dress? Yeah, or? I had a baby face. I literally wore a blue dress copycat because I didn't know at the time. Oh my God, you're like a doppelganger. <laughs> yes, I. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Did you fucking hold I on. walked I down that one. Oh, yeah. I walked so, the street to DC. So you're like a, take two. So you're like a doppelgangbanger? Yes. How funny am I, guys? Uh, Fuck you, you get a Scooby snack for that one. <laughs> <laughs> go go on, Monica. Okay. So I look just like Monica. Yeah. Okay. I'm walking down the streets of DC and there's so many people doing double takes. I had no idea why. It wasn't until years later that I was like, maybe people thought based on what I was wearing that I was oh, trying yeah. to look like her or that I was her. Like a fanboy? Sure. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You were cosplaying. Yeah. <sighs> That's a, not. A, that's a home not. Wrecker? Dude, yeah. I want to grow up to be the first mistress. <laughs> <laughs> I made all the little Hillary's jealous. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, that was like a really horrible time in my life. Horrible. Maybe I'll post a picture. <laughs> I can w- post W H O R E. I'll post a picture on Patreon so you can yeah. see. All right, yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, subscribe to our Patreon if you want yeah. to see a uh, teenage horror. <laughs> yeah, a mini Monica yeah. or whatever. So I gotta tell you. I don't remember Paul. Yes, we Paul were talking Martin. about Paul. Okay, Paul so and Betty Joe. Paul yeah. and BJ. That's oh how we God. we got in this that whole was a fucking tangent. Monica. Sorry, arc. guys. I gotta be real honest. Um, this Scooby suit is killing me. So I, I'm gonna like just. What's your fucking red rocket fly, man? <laughs> <laughs> I, no, no, no. There's gonna be rockets red glare towards the end here. Oh, okay. But I'm just gonna like just I'm gonna slowly start taking this thing off. I it's thought that dog didn't horror. sweat. And <laughs> I'm just panting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So <laughs> you should be taking a photo because this is ending soon. Normally, Betty Jo, no matter how late she was, would drop her sacks off at home before. <laughs> this chick's cool. I'm sorry. Before she would go out for the uh, evening. This chick doesn't have a good dad. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't this time. Okay. And so when his body was discovered at the Spring Lake Park, which was a famous lover's lane. When so, they saw him, they they just thought he was a soul victim because okay. they didn't know about her. So they found him like just dead on the ground yeah, or in the car? because he was in the road. Sure. He's in the road. Sure. And Sometimes he, people fall out, you know. Yeah. And he looked like he was by himself, so they didn't assume that it was a lover's lane thing because at this time they still haven't drawn the well, Sometimes you go there to jack off. <laughs> they hadn't drawn the conclusion that it it's was lover's like lane. a lover's lane thing. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> so anyways, Thank it's you. Palm Sunday. So the sheriff decides. Can I ask at this Palm point, Sunday? Psalm. Yeah. <laughs> this when, is, whenever I try to be good, you get worse. <laughs> oh yeah. This is what I, I got to ask. Is the first suspect the boyfriend that was like, "Yeah, you can go on a date. I won't oh fucking my God, I kill you about in him. two hours." Like, yeah. what are you talking about? A uh, problem. Like, if no. I was the boyfriend that let him go, I'd be like, "Ah, that looks bad." <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> but you know what's really interesting about the boyfriend? So when they, he's a cuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they discovered this guy's body, around the same time they were getting calls from Betty Joe's mom, being like, "My daughter, she never came home." So they realized that there's probably her missing too. So the sheriff busted in the local church doors. Sure. And he said, "All the men here, we need to round up all the men to find her." Why is this so easy to see in my mind in Texas? Like, I know. Right it's when so you said that, I'm we like, need to do a chalk outline on yeah. all of you men to make like, sure. It yeah. Doesn't yeah. Match. Like, it's all so right, Texas. everyone against the back wall. He probably has a big stupid hat on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, Ross Perot went to that church, and he was a really as in the Ross Perot, the yeah. Ross, no, the Perot. other Ross Perot. The fuck from Friends. That's what I'm asking. 
<laughs> I, for what it's worth, I don't you know Ross. Monkey. I don't know Ross. You don't remember? Friends. I don't know Ross, Ross Perot had the yeah. monkey and they really if jumped I, a shark. If I'm honest, when I look in my brain, like Ross Perot video, Simpson video of Ross Perot <laughs> comes up when he's like yelling against George Bush in the 90s. Okay, so Ross Perot. Ross Perot was BFF with the boyfriend. And he said, I heard that your girlfriend you is missing. You got your Ross Perot voice. Okay. Uh, I heard your girlfriend was, <laughs> was out with a guy who got shot by the side of the road. Is that who, what Ross Perot sounds like? I think so. It is, I always thought, now. I thought. I think so. I thought Ross Perot was kind of more of like a Texas high pitch voice. Yeah, but like that's that. like uh, 40 years later. I didn't know Ross Perot was a, a like a. A flamingo dancer at night, like <laughs> flamenco. Yeah, I don't know what the term is. <laughs> no, the, no, he's talking about dancers on one legs. Exactly. <laughs> they eat. Okay, so Ross Perot eat the kind Ross of diet Pro, that make them pink. Yeah. So they start looking for Betty Jo. BJ. She's yeah, Betty. Yeah, BJ. Just call her Grandma. Grandma. Okay, but she's only fifteen. But okay, she was found like two and a half hours later. Dead. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, Real sad situation. Now she was. Where was the sex? That is such a good question that you asked that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because. I was just being silly. But no, no, no. <laughs> because remember how I told you there's really no evidence from the other prior things except for a 32 caliber bullet? Well, I mean, she's clearly horny that night. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get down to brass tacks, Jake. Okay. <laughs> so she was found a mile away from Paul's body. A mile? A mile. Okay. And she was found bruised. Down south, if you know what I'm saying. Like like John Henry got oh, on her, <laughs> her feet. Yeah. So they actually so she was raped. Yes. Okay. So they now actually Hard have to make a joke about that. Sorry. <laughs> they Take now, two. So okay. oh, they actually terrible. have evidence now. Because one, her sex was not found. And it has a serial number. So that if oh, it okay, was pawned, yeah. sure. they would be able to connect the serial number with whoever pawned the sex. Two, they found t- 32 caliber shell casings. Three, they found his Paul's date book next to a condom right by his body. It's like Clue Town. Yeah. <laughs> Was it Colonel Mustard with the with the yeah. with the condom? Yes. <laughs> in the library. Four, they found a leaf between her jacket and her blouse, which means that her jacket had been off at some time and that she must have been on the ground because how did the leaf get there? So we're confident she t- jacked it off. At some well, point that and night. she here's the weird thing: she had semen in her V. That's not that weird. But there was no foreign hairs, which is weird because back then everybody had hair down there, and when the hairs rub against each other, hairs would be deposited normally. I hate how you said yeah, hairs that much. Awful. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, seriously, you just yeah. really hit the hard H's. On okay, that I'm shit. so yeah. sorry like, about the hairs. I'm gonna go. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go shave my balls again, really quick. <laughs> so hey, she I mean, said that she was killed with two shots: one to the heart, one to the head. But they tested Paul's penis. They tested dead Paul's penis. Dead Paul's penis. Okay. Like, and with, they, like math questions? Well, they take like a saline solution and saline his penis and then found out that he had not had sex recently because there was no sperms anywhere to be seen. So they robbed his Peter to check out if he had paid Paul. Yes. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, sorry. That was a Man, good this one. Is, this is funny, but it's really macabre yeah. it is really macabre but so it's I'm bringing some levity to it uh, so. so unfortunately back then when they would test the sperm they could only tell like what blood type the sperm belonged to but not sure. like uh individual like they can today okay um so they tested it they found like no residual sperm on him no he had none which like if you were having sex, I guess, but there was the condom thing. But Did they he nev- have pubes? Did he have hair? <laughs> you were saying <laughs> they never tested the condom. Okay. They just threw that. What's a like, condom back then? Just lambskin. But they never even picked it up and tested it. So it's like they just left the condom in the grass, where it, you played as it it's lies. Good police work. I mean, that's then. also like lovers lane, dude. There was like, well, yeah. that's true. It's I break guess. up the condoms. There's tonight. like three condoms on top of the one we need. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is with like silver gum under a desk. <laughs> the Silver Lake Park gum is under that a desk. when, like, every Saturday, Friday, Saturday night, that place was packed with people who were like pumping. If you know what I mean. <laughs> no, I don't know. What, what do, do you mean? mean? Yeah. Well, there was people like laying. Gas? Were they saddlebacking? <laughs> Just a gas station? <laughs> they were just laying some lead every Friday and Saturday night. Sure, okay. okay. so it was regular. 
So they figure, why pick up the condom? It could be anybody's condom. So they didn't pick up the condom. Yeah, I'm not going to go pick up just a regular yeah. condom. I want to yeah. pick up... I don't think I... I don't want to pick Paul's up like... It is a condom on it. I want to pick up one I've used. No. <laughs> with a stick. <laughs> like, they're all handmade back then, so you know... <laughs> <laughs> That's my father's like, hand me down kind of. Like your grandma, grandma like knitted it. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is this your condom? condom? It's your penis koozie. Yeah, it's all just like <laughs> silk. Penis koozie? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, let's just okay. keep going. It's all just that silver skin funny. from a goat. So. Okay. So now that there's three sets of people that lovers who were killed three weeks in a row. Sure. 63 so, days apart. <laughs> so Yes. This is when the Texas Rangers and the FBI get involved. Sure. It's Chuck Norris. Okay. Yeah, Chuck Norris. And it just so happened that Chuck Norris lived across the street from Betty Joe Booker. Is that a weird coincidence? I got two questions. One about that, but before that. So bef- so they had serial killer like profiling in 1946? Not, not, not yet. Okay. But it's coming. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. And, <laughs> and oh, oh, boo. Sorry, Scooby's guys. alarm's going off. <laughs> and a follow-up question. So he lived across the street from... From Betty Jo. So he would he would be aware of who she was. Wouldn't that be a conflict of interest? Like, huh. aren't, you, aren't, you, aren't you not supposed to you know, know the victim? I agree with in, you. In a scenario, be like... Because essentially, you could be a suspect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you're a neighbor. You're... You know, 15-year-old girl across the street. I'm saying, you know how to get away with yeah. crime. I'm just saying. It just, and do it, high kicks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you at least... Tornado kicks. You yeah. at least, like, I'm not, I'm not saying... Fight like, you would at least know how to frame it like someone else did it if yeah. you were in that situation. Yes. Okay. But I don't think that they considered that at the time. I think okay. that's something we would think about now, but I don't think they thought about it back then. Sure. They're still doing, still doing chalk outlines, man. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> So the Texas Ranger in charge would be Manuel the Wolf Gonzalez. What you got to do to get a Lobo's nickname? Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> Manuel goes by the Wolf, not Manuel Lobos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Las right. Lobos. Okay. <laughs> so That'd be like Jake Lobos, <laughs> <laughs> which will be my new <laughs> moniker. <laughs> the rest of this. You can slow that word down a lot. You must Keep refer going. to me as the Lobos. Okay. So anyways, he was a larger in life character. He wore the ten gallon cap. He had the forty five pistol oh, on so his it's like waist. A, it's like a Tarantino character. Yeah. Okay, sure. Okay. He claimed that he had been in hundreds of bar fights and he said, I got in fights by myself and I got out of fights by himself. And it would always be like him versus like fifty guys, you know, something that's like totally Sounds ridiculous. Well, I mean, this is all, you got to also remember. This is like, um, like the birthplace of like Hank Hill, and and Cotton Hill. You know, <laughs> I kill fifty men. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nazi took my shins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, okay. So he's so, a liar. <laughs> definitely, he claimed to kill seventy five men in the line of duty, which now he would be totally canceled if he said this. But I, I guess back then it was like bragging rights. So like, um, uh, Texas Chris Kyle. Whoa! The sniper. Whoa! Yeah. Didn't he I have like? It. Didn't he have like seventy <laughs> something? I don't know. That was controversial. I'm sorry. It's it's not. I don't. I thought I, he. I had, don't I, think it's controversial, but I think it could be construed. I don't as understand controversial. why she's doing the fucking like Joey from Blossom. I'm just saying. Did, didn't he have like an absurd amount of like Whoa. confirmed kills or something like that? And it was. I think anyway, he had over a hundred so, confirmed I'm kills. Sorry, anyway, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm so sorry. Anyways, I'm sorry. So sorry, Chris Kyle's family. He said yeah. he was like, I'm gonna solve this lickety split. Five minutes, no problem. And he was not going to leave Texarkana without apprehending the killer. Sounds like he's running for office. Yeah. What it turns out was is that (laughs) he would just hang around the local law enforcement and then get the, you know, whatever the newest, latest rumors were and then report it to the, like, the press. And people were like, wow. So he's smart is what you look He's He's just playing the system. Yeah, he's playing the system. He's the same guy that says he fights uh, 50 men. Something like that. Exactly. So now, come the next three weeks, people are a little bit more leery about going to the lover's lane because they're thinking, you know, hey, it's, you know, the 21st day I might get killed if I try to have. For what it's worth, if I was a father and I was trying to not have like a grandson too early, I would be like, I would be like, did you see what happened to Lover's Lane to my daughter? Yeah. Have you seen? Have you checked yeah. the date? Circled it. Over a mile away. Fuck with a snub nose. You know. <laughs> yeah. Is it a leap year? It could yeah. be. It could be tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't go fucking. Right. Yeah. So 
That would like the after the third. Uh, okay, so what would that be? The eighty fourth day. Yeah. Nobody would be out. <laughs> you know. Like, you would think that, but there's people still out there. Sure. You know, because men have that. You know, they don't care. I feel like you're making weird gestures. I, no, I just I, this <laughs> is an all. I I did it to be funny. Uh, for a Halloween episode, and it's awful. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, so you'll never be able to wash that smell out. No. Okay, so anyways, so businesses that used to be open until like the wee hours in the morning, like three, four, five, they started closing at eleven because they're not going to get any business because nobody's out. Sure. Yeah, and the then, kind of company is like out of business. <laughs> yeah. Every Two, twenty-one days. The local law enforcement were like, I have a smashing idea on how to catch this killer. They sent their own daughters. Why haven't you been doing yeah, that, that was voice really, the really entire good. time? This came out you of nowhere. You waited until now? We're fucking, I don't know. We're 99 episodes in, and yeah. you're sitting on a Texas accent? Texarkana. I don't have a Texas accent. Well, yes, you do. It was more of a Texarkana accent. You, you have me. southern to me accent. <laughs> Well, I think that was drum Get out. because I, <laughs> I don't think I okay. have one. Right. But anyway, so they would send their own daughters out. I'm sorry, they'd what? They would send their own daughters. <laughs> Slow it down. <laughs> I said, I said, they send their own I daughter said, back. Yeah, <laughs> I sent my daughter. They sent them out with the local law enforcement to lure the phantom killer, which the press had called them the phantom. They're fucking trolling? Yeah, they're trolling. <laughs> they're out there trolling with their daughters? But do you know what's worse? What? They said Texas Rangers didn't have any daughters to use so they had to use mannequins <laughs> sad i would love this job <laughs> it's just like i'd be like ah to whore it up <laughs> you know give can, her bigger tits can you imagine yeah. can you imagine sitting next to a mannequin and smoking your cigarette and being like you want one oh, yeah. i don't know it's kind of it's kind of weird all that thing would catch would be me at 2 a.m <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like somehow like the mannequin still has a cold sore on her yeah. mouth be like well the mannequin's <laughs> pregnant <laughs> yeah or just like uh we're gonna want to hit that uh, thing with some de-lousing <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a week after the last murder with Betty Joe, somebody in Corpus Christi, Texas, was trying to pawn a sax. Okay. And uh. when the lady asked, oh, where did this sax come from? He was acting all suspicious, and then he ran out the door. Okay. I there hope he's go. playing it yeah. out the door, like, bah, 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 yeah. bah, bah. <laughs> So then they reported it, and so, like, the Texas Rangers were like, jizzing their pants like this is the guy this oh. is the guy you Hold know on. there's got to be a better way to say that i don't know what the better way to say it is they, they were, were very coming excited in their britches yeah <laughs> ejaculating they're in their shooting Levi's. and scooting <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay shooting and scooting let's go with that yeah. okay yeah, that's so good. Uh, can i just take the moment here to like say since you said shooting and scooting I have to give you something, Jake, and it's a bit of a surprise. I don't want this. I don't, okay. know, what, I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't like the lead up. It's, it's a callback. It, it very is from very cagey. Uh, I'm like my dog going to the vet. It's like, from I listener don't, TJ. I don't trust okay. you. Okay. <laughs> listener TJ got us something, and it's from the Quanta Parker episode. Since okay. we're doing a historical episode, my favorite. I've yeah. literally been waiting until you've been here to present this to Jake. Okay, okay. And I can't think of a better time than in my Scooby outfit to do this. Quanta Parker. Oh, okay. The yeah, uh, yeah the yeah. horse. The pickerly Hold pear on. bear. Oh, really? Yeah, the, oh, the, oh, the prickly pear baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ah, this is uh, this is not going well. I don't like this segment. Um, <laughs> this is for. For listeners, let me describe this. Those listening, not seeing it on YouTube, Adam has a uh, he, he has skinned the top half of his Scooby Doo <laughs> outfit, and apparently he's a patriot. <laughs> <laughs> and his uh, he pulled a beer out of his speedo thong. What do we got here? So oh, I TJ touched... wanted you to pull it out of your thong. I touched the no. dick side of the beer. <laughs> Hold All on, right. what does that say, Jake? This is a uh, Michelob Ultra Infusion Lime and oh, prickly pear cactus. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, thank you so much, TJ. Oh, baby, I can't wait to have this. <laughs> oh, it's, was, a, it's a twist off. Yeah, I, that's why you don't just shake it off. Seriously, so. um, it's been literally like my testicles are like frozen into a small like black walnut right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not bad. I don't mind it. <laughs> the okay. uh, really uh, the prickly pear hides the ball taste. Yeah, the, pr- <laughs> yeah, the prickly pear really brings out the uh, the inside of the baby. <laughs> <laughs> it has the brine from the balls, I guess. Listeners, oh. <laughs> listeners, if you don't get these jokes, you need to listen to the Quanta Parker episode. Right, so. Thanks, Michelob Ultra. All right. Yeah, so there you go. That's from listener TJ. Thank and you, honestly, TJ. like, 
my balls, I can still feel like the phantom chill. <laughs> like it's been, it's been, been sitting there so waiting. long. Yeah. The, like, the phantom baby. Yeah, I've got that uh, that fear fear shrinkage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's go back to the uh, the well, sacks. The sacks. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, the, yeah, that yeah. The dude was yeah, a because my, my sacks is very frozen right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> they followed up on it and it wasn't anything to be concerned about. They found the saxophone or the, no? The dude no, ran they away? just they just followed up with the the sax dude and he was a dead end. Okay. Sure. So then they started to like try to think about who could this phantom be the local law enforcement said he was quote unquote a sex pervert <laughs> yeah, he's raping I mean, people with a gun listen <laughs> like that's not normal stuff where do you get this job where you say obvious shit <laughs> he's a like, sex pervert listen, remember from um from yeah, team america in, impulse with like i'm problem. clairvoyant <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like stating the very yeah. obvious things now <laughs> like this person likes to use a firearm yeah and then assault people with it. <laughs> <laughs> He's a night owl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the FBI decided to call upon a prison psychiatrist to do a profile, which was one of the very first profiles sure. ever done on a killer. Do so we, that's the we, answer to your question. Do we have that profile? Yes, we do. And can we turn it into a game? Yes. Hit me with some attributes. <laughs> he would be middle aged. Damn it! <laughs> Is he a bedwetter? Strong sex drive. All right, that's not me. Yeah, <laughs> so, like, sadist. All right, that's kind of back I'm to me again. More of a sadist. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I get that. I feel you. Yeah. Okay, smart. Uh, ah, not me. <laughs> relax, ladies. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> not likely to be apprehended. No, nah, I can't run. <laughs> so. Probably aware of the inner workings of an investigation. I mean, we got like three I watched a lot yeses, of CSI. four no's. Yeah. Not a, a veteran. That's me. You're Jake. good. You're good. <laughs> That's Jake. You're good. <laughs> Probably <laughs> white. <laughs> Back to me again. I like, <laughs> I, I like how Listeners, like, if you're watching the YouTube video right now, I'm clearly white. Can I can I say like I like how I'm so white I pronounce the H in it. I like how they're like probably white, even though one of the victims was, was like he's black. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, and he was also labeled to be a disorganized killer. Oh, that's me. Oh, it's back to Jake that's again. Hundred <laughs> percent. So an example of a disorganized killer is because of the first scene where he lost control of both victims is mm -hmm. being disorganized because he lost control. Sure. When he said, oh, when run yeah. for the road? Yeah, but then he wasn't able to kill them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's an example of an organized killer. They have a strong father authority when they're growing up, okay. and they're skilled, they're educated. And Hi, examples Chuck. of that would be like <laughs> Ted Bundy, John Wayne Gacy, and okay. BTK, where they are able to take their time because sure. they have a controlled environment. Now, the disorganized killer is usually in female-led households. Sure. Okay. And I don't know why you keep looking at me. I'm just like, you look at me for both those. I know. Like, nobody and was in be, charge. Hi, Molly. Yeah. <laughs> they'll be unskilled, and examples of that would be like Ted Bun or um, Jeffrey Dahmer, Jack the Ripper. Relax. I just want to take some pictures. <laughs> Ed Kemper. We're going to watch some they, videos. Well, because like Dahmer like, didn't have control, obviously, of all of his victims. Because one got away, kind of. I don't know. All that disc detergent in the fucking. <laughs> like, okay. Okay. So anyways, he's an organized killer. Three weeks since the last murder, people are like not exactly filling up the lover's lanes. But at the sure. same time, there was a husband and wife who were in their 30s named Virgil and Katie Starks. And okay. they lived about 10 miles away from Texarkana. Okay. Now, on this particular evening... The guy who was like the lead investigator for the local sheriff's department, he saw a car that looked kind of suspicious to him that was sitting kind of kitty corner from this house. What's a suspicious car look like in 1946? It was an older. It's the model car going. Don't be suspicious. Don't, don't be suspicious. suspicious. Was, don't, don't be suspicious. Don't, don't keep be going. We're gonna keep going. Okay. <laughs> so, I guess it was because he was parked in a non-driveway. Don't be. <laughs> Sorry. The only reason that the cops didn't stop is because they had to turn in their expense reports for the month. And if they didn't do that, they wouldn't get reimbursed. I mean, you know, it's a challenging time. 
Some financially com- some comp yeah. shit okay yeah sure, fine. yeah it's not but like they're making a million dollars like they didn't want to stop they no they could it sounds stop. like a couple of bad boys what you yeah. want what you going to yeah. <laughs> so he's like i'll look i'll come back later and look at it sure so he left well what happened was inside the house was the the homeowner he owned a welding shop that was behind his house sure and his wife was like getting ready for bed and he's listening to the radio and she's like, I hear something outside. And he was probably well, like, hold on, hold on. We found out you can do a Texas accent. <laughs> yeah, like for real. This minutes. is like ridiculous. I heard something outside. My, hold on. I've got my tits out. So like, I, he does. I do declare. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my breasts. Is. <laughs> Don't make me pee. I, I, oh my, if you piss yourself on my chair, I'll never let you live it down. So but anyway, I already did it my, before. <laughs> on my chair? Remember at the shop? When no. I, yeah, I pee my pants before on a book. <laughs> So you're a 1946 okay. housewife. 1946. Here you go. Okay, so she's like, I heard something. And hold he's on, like, hold on. I heard something. It sounded like my titties getting big. <laughs> like, listen, Adam's a much better Texas wife yeah. than you are. So, like, just, like <laughs> let's just go with it. Do you you're, realize you're, how long I've spent you're now as a Texas a wife? welding Texas uh, yeah, man. Yeah, I'll seconds, be the man. Like, yeah. <laughs> but he's like, woman, I. <laughs> oh, God damn a woman. Hot, hot, no, this will be, be a fun experiment. You, you okay. stay. You stay offensive women stereotype. Hold you on. stay um, offensive men Hold stereotype. On, me. And you I'll just enjoy right it with now. the audience. All right. You always say you hear noises when there's nothing there. I know you say the house is creaking, but you don't even know. This is great. <laughs> Keep it going. Okay. So anyway, she's like, turn down the radio. Cause I know. swear you got that scat music on. <laughs> Ba, ba, beat up, ba, ba, ba. Okay. Okay. So, that, so then what happened? So then she hears the sound of breaking glass. Okay. So she runs out to the living room to be like, why is my husband not responding to me? Sure. Anyways, then she sees him slumped over with like blood everywhere. So she sees that he's been shot. Sleeping again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're lazy. Just sleeping your blood everywhere. <laughs> All right, so he got shot? <laughs> yeah, so she's like, oh, no, he's shot, you know? And so then all of a sudden, two more shots come in. So she's like, ah! So she, like, ducks down. <laughs> ah! <laughs> so she ducks down after being surprised. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, That's her subtitles. <laughs> I, I did mention that they were in their 30s. Well, they never had kids, so guess what? They could afford electricity. And telephones, which I nobody think, had phones. I think the term is dink. So Double like, income, no kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> sounds, like I, sounds like I'd shoot him too, man. So <laughs> she was able to get to a phone to call nine, you know, 911 to call for help. Sure. They're like, hey, Betty, the only one with a phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I dialed one. <laughs> okay. So then what happened? So, but the problem is, is when she tried to talk, she realized that. She'd been shot two times in the face. Oh. And like. Oh, the levity just. <laughs> that's... <laughs> All right. One went Hold in, on. One, <laughs> one went in <laughs> her cheek and behind My her friend. ear. Okay. <laughs> one... but, but the other one went through her tongue and took all her teeth out. So when she was trying to talk. So with... she matched with Texarkana people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no teeth. Yeah. When you try to talk with so no teeth. So shot camo in her. No one, <laughs> so... no one can understand a thing you're saying. Oh, so she's from Texas. I'm making jokes, but that's fucking terrible. Okay. Yeah. It is totally terrible. So then she decides, yeah. second plan, I'm going to go into the bedroom where my husband keeps his 45. This chick's tougher than a coffin nail, she though. Is. I mean, she is. <laughs> Holy shit. So then she tries to search for this 45 and then was like, oh, I always meant to ask him exactly where he stores it, but she couldn't remember and she couldn't find it. Sure. She also shot in the face twice. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so then she thought, I'm going to die for sure. So she got a pen and paper to write down what was going to, what happened to her so that the people. I've been too busy like, screaming in pain. It's like what yeah. like, Tupac did, like Shady shot me. Yeah. Yeah. But then she hears a noise. So she like runs <laughs> out of the you. bedroom. She looks in the kitchen and she sees like the. Her you know, teeth. The entire. <laughs> <laughs> You're not lying. You're not lying. She sees her teeth. But. <laughs> Like, she sees that he's got, like, most of his legs in her kitchen window. So he's in the house. He's breached the house. Okay. He's breached the house because he's legs first. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> He's taking his time breaking in because he clearly killed two people. I will say people. you're not laughing more when I say I'm going breach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like true. Leg like first, leg like first. Yeah. I never I, experienced it. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> she like ran through the house out the front door and then she ran across the street where her in-laws lived. But sure. like typical in-laws, they totally let her down because they weren't home. Sure. So then she runs to her neighbor's house, knocks on the door. He surprisingly answers it right away. And then she says, I'm shot, you know. And then <laughs> he didn't have a telephone. So what he did it was shoot a pistol in the air or a shotgun in the air. And that was a code to his neighbor that he needed to borrow the car. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's like totally what? weird. So they get a car. And they drive her to the hospital. That's like Dude, early U- Uber. Uber hits. Yeah. <laughs> Uber hits different. That's 1946 Uber. <laughs> On the way Four to the yeah. hospital. On the way to the hospital. I need a fucking deluxe. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 12 gauge versus a yeah. twin. What's, what do you shoot for Uber Eats? <laughs> she, as her teeth are falling out, a teeth a tooth like, falls so, out. Like a that radium has, girl. That has yeah. like a gold filling, and she realizes that she could use this as payment to pay her Uber driver. So <laughs> she paid him in the gold tooth for giving her a lift to the hospital. All right, yeah. this, this lady is an her, angel. Her, <laughs> yeah, her, this is for the rise of gas. Yep. <laughs> Ask grass or cast, no one rides for free. So <laughs> <laughs> her husband's like dead. Yes, her husband is dead. What a pussy. Because here's the thing. Like, I played Warzone. You get two headshots, you assume dead. So I understand this guy's frustration. I would go in feet first as well. (laughs) So she makes it. Okay. The police get back to his house, and there was a small house fire. Because remember I told you they had electricity? Well, when the bullet went through a heating pad that he had on his back, apparently it caused a short in the heating pad, which started the house on fire. Some, like, like, um... What is it? Uh... He had a heating pad. In yeah, 1946. I mean, this is like <laughs> shooting someone through an Oculus nowadays. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's one of those. Like I thought what most people fuck? just had like hot water yeah. bottles. No, because he had electricity. So he's like, I'm using the pad. You know. Yeah, that's what happens when you're an early adopter of electricity. You burn to death after you get, <laughs> you're gonna wrap yourself in the coils. So, <laughs> so unfortunately, a lot of evidence was destroyed because of the fire. For what's worse, you can go by BJ now. <laughs> Sorry, that's awful. Yeah, okay. because she has no teeth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hell yeah, it's <laughs> 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 a gummer. Hey, prickly pear baby. Right. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> thank you, TJ. <laughs> so this crime scene yielded the most evidence. One well, yeah, teeth everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> there was evidence in the mouse trap. But <laughs> <laughs> so. The car that I was telling you about. Well, he walked through a field to get to the house, and it left a size nine boot imprint. So Who wears a size kind of nine? That's tiny a little feet. I know. Yeah. One time yeah. I watched a crime investigation video, and in the interrogation, he said he was going to shove his size eight boot in the cop's ass, and I was like, size eight? That's yeah, it. You know what they say, uh, guy, you know what they say about guys with small feet? Small, small socks. socks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, hold on. Can I, can I go back for a second? Okay, so... the. The suspicious car did contain. Yes. The, but he walked suspect. through a field? Yes. So the cop was driving by a car and he's like, that looks suspicious. There's no chalk yes. outline. It, that cop was 100% <laughs> right. That was the phantom. Sure. Okay. So they were able to get the tire imprints from the car, the hmm. shoe print, the welding shop that where she thought she heard a noise. Well, someone had broke into the welding shop. So she was right. She heard a noise. Did they look for a booster seat sale <laughs> recently for, for a size, size nine? nine. <laughs> The other thing is <laughs> that there was money in her purse and on the table, so it obviously it was wasn't theft. It, was, it was not a robbery. Yeah. The um, other thing was was that they he left a flashlight on the table, and there was only 200 flashlights in the entire United States that were ever manufactured in this particular model. And this guy had a heating pad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, well, the killer left the flashlight. Sure, I'm saying like, I okay, mean, what this- were they dressed in? I don't know. It's just 1946 sounds, like a, clothes. sounds like a crime of fashion. No. Ah, there you go. Right. So, You're wearing a Scooby Doo <laughs> outfit. I for was. Those, for those I've got just half listening. Of one now. It, it, yeah, you, it's been awful. He is, <laughs> he is adorning half of a Scooby Doo outfit. Okay, so. So the very first 
newspaper that ever printed anything in color was this flashlight, really? which was in red. That's fascinating. To try to find, yeah, isn't you, it? You think like, the very here's, first colored print? Here's the thing: you couldn't rely on people imagining red. I guess not. Be like, yeah. we gotta, we gotta really paint the picture for these people. <laughs> yeah. we, we were looking for a flashlight. We were gonna do a sunset, it's, but here's a flashlight. Yeah, it's, it's this color. Piece of like, shit. if I, so if I was the first ever printing in color, I would be selling red flashlights. <laughs> be like, look at the color of this flashlight in this ad. I wouldn't be looking for a murderer. Well, only one store That's sold it. That's bad for the flashlight but industry. They didn't keep record. They didn't keep any business records with receipts or anything. So. Well, yeah, but that was a thing. Like Texas Canada's like, ah, it's one of eight people. Yeah, They're like one guy had a size yeah. eight foot. Yeah, if it was like a Lisa Frank flashlight, they'd be like, Bill <laughs> bought that. He's a weirdo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a red flashlight. Yeah. So. Here's the other weird thing, though, is that the caliber that he was killed with and that she was shot with was a twenty-two. Did you say 32 earlier? What or is 32 a, earlier, what but is this a, is a 22. I meant. I think I meant to ask that. What is a 32 caliber? Is that a common, I, um, I, like a 38? Common back then, but com, yeah. not common it's now. It's not common now. Okay, but so a 22 was through the window. Yeah, and usually jaw. 22 is not something that, it's like a squirrel thing, not like a I mean, yeah, but thing. dude, 22 is still like. Kill It'll the still fuck kill out you, me. but still, I mean, like. It bounces off your ribs. Don't you think the 32 would be better, though, if you had to choose 32, 20? Uh, I don't know. Sounds like it'll send you to a dentist. Like... <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Can I get a complete restructuring? Okay. okay. So that's the evidence they have on this case. Sure. Now they have to worry because guess what? In three weeks is going to happen. Okay. The killer is going to come back. Now, so all the people, all the men in the village, they put all their wives and the children in Hotel Grimm, the only hotel in Texas. <laughs> it's called Hotel Grimm. Yeah, this is like fucking foreshadow town. Yeah. But it's, well, it's in Kilgore, Texas. Kilgore, well, Texas, and Hotel Grimm. Like, yeah. so you're going to die. Like, yeah. Just, but, like, that's but it's Grimm with two M's like Aesop. Like bro- bro- Brothers Grimm? Yeah, yeah, Brothers Grimm. It's like right next door to Buttfuck, Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's examine the suspects. We have suspects? We yeah, have suspects. oh, let's examine the suspects. Dun, dun, First dun. suspect. I think you need some ominous H-B music again. H.B. Duty. <laughs> <laughs> now, Duty. Okay, okay. Hold on, you need to give me like a second. Duty, duty, do. What, what is well, H.B.? Yeah, Hold on, what does H.B. stand for? <laughs> uh, Heavy butt duty. I have no idea. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> now, H. B. Duty. Let's just call him Duty. Duty. Let's yeah. Let's committed oh suicide God. in his dorm room by, by cyanide. constipation. Cyanide. cyanide, which is very rare. I was gonna say, where do you get where do you get cyanide? You could get it at any pharmacy back then. I don't know. Apple seeds. At lots of <laughs> apples. Okay. Okay. So he. Why was he a suspect though? Because. When he committed suicide, he left a suicide note saying that he did all of it. Yeah, but like sometimes, uh, oh, okay. sometimes yeah. there's like people that, that, yeah, like yeah. people are fucking weirdos. They yeah. are really weird. Now, the weird coincidence is this one, he was at the VFW with the night that Betty Jo Booker played her sax. That is kind of weird. Okay. All but, right. but there's not a lot to do back then. Okay. So, two, not to duty. his <laughs> sister and Katie Starks. Roommates in college. Okay. So he knew who Katie and Virgil Starks were. A couple connections. All right. Sure. sure. Other than that, the only reason I brought him up is because his name's Duty. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A fist, yeah. fist bump for the Low listeners. Hanging. Yeah. Low hanging yeah. fruit yeah. is my orchard. Honestly, if I found out <laughs> there was a suspect with the last name Duty and you didn't bring him up, we would. I know. I you guys it, would be so mad at me. I'd take you out of like like listener correction. Yeah, it would be like, listen, this should have happened. It didn't. Yeah, I'm like, sorry. Renee, we need to have a talk. Yeah. But he you did. But skipped like, over they're a poop fired. Joke. You're fired. <laughs> yeah. But fired. so he was proven like he didn't. Like, well, other than saying, other than him saying he did it, there's no other proof because even if you say you do it, you still have to have like evidence that you know something. Sure. Okay. Which he did not have. Okay. Not that he could be interviewed. Second suspect. It's a weekend at Bernie's. Ewell oh, Sweeney. It. He was 29. He was born in Arkadelphia. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> happening. Hold on a sec. Arkadelphia. There is an Arkadelphia. Arkansas doesn't touch Philadelphia, I think does you it? need to be. No. I think 
I think you need to be more specific because it wasn't just Arkadelphi. I know that he was like. Was there a, a young up and coming boxer that almost made it and beat no, a guy was, named Apollo? Who was actually, Creed? Was actually <laughs> in West Arkadelphia, born and raised. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe in the playground is where he spent but most of his days chilling yeah, okay. out, Max Black, and all cool, shooting some people. I was going with a couple of guys, but I'm doing good. Started making trouble in this neighborhood. Anyways, um, don't, so, don't, don't you dare stop. Start shooting broads in his neighborhood. Come on. <laughs> Take it off. one little fight, and his mom got scared, and she said, <laughs> he pulled up to the house about seven or eight. <laughs> <laughs> and his mom said, Yo, home, smell you later. If you held- he looked at his kingdom, he was finally there. Texas <laughs> Arcana. If I'm you sorry, held a 32 caliber or 22 against my head, right. I could not finish this. Yeah. I, so I commend you. That was yeah. great. I love that show. Yeah. Okay. Clearly. <laughs> How'd you feel when Uncle yeah. Phil died? <laughs> Horrible. <Aww. laughs> oh, too soon. It's been decades. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Okay. You will Sweeney, 29, Arkadelphia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now. Sweeney had sort of a rough childhood. His dad was a minister, but he was like the alcoholic minister. Hell yeah. And then... Minister. Yes. Yes. (laughs) He's doing the Eucharist a lot. Yeah. (laughs) And auto theft was like very common crime back then. And he was like the auto theft king of Texarkana. Nice. Sure. So then he takes the car, sells them in Atlanta. But what they realize is that there is a correlation between stolen cars and like people saying, oh, we saw this car at each of these different crime scenes. Okay. Like every He's crime in, scene. In for a penny, in for a pound. Stealing yeah. a car, I'm going to rape and well, kill a chick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With my pistol. Yeah. So, well, the thing is, is that they would be like, I saw white Plymouth, and it just so happened that someone had stolen a white Plymouth around that time. Yeah, for the third time, because there's only four cars like, in Texarkana. Yeah. Can I challenge you? I had a you, green Ford can, Tempo. Can I challenge you to Tempo. not leave this character for the rest of this episode? <laughs> can you always speak like that for the rest of it? I, I can't. I believe in you. I, I don't. So... Uh, Grand Theft Auto, very common. I think it's Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> so they locate a thefted car in a shopping center. Okay. And they're like, this is our chance, boys. So they like stake out the car. And then what do you suppose gets in the car? Little Miss Peggy Swinney. The Who's- wife of Yule Swinney by Ooh. one day. So since they was mentioned earlier, Jake, you have a blank stare in your face. Yeah, I'm like, I think the Yule's one of the suspects. Okay, the prickly pear knocked me out of it. Yule's one of the suspects. But the thing is, is that because she married him one day before, they cannot compel her to say anything against him because she's the wife now. Sure, okay. So she's like, I do declare I have no idea that this vehicle was stolen. It's kind of romantic. Yeah, it is kind of. It really is. But then yeah. she kind marry of... all of your accomplices. Yeah, that's all. I'm <laughs> but like, it's real easy stuff, guys. Yeah. That's crime math. Yeah, yeah. it's the oceans uh, one. <laughs> 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 so. Ten to follow. But then she folded like a lawn chair. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. And then she said, "I think I was at one of the murder scenes." How do you think you were at a murder scene? Well, that's what she says. I got okay. some of that thirty-two caliber splatter on my face. <laughs> okay, so which uh, which murder scene? The uh... the Martin Booker is it the, case. Was it the first one? It's the one with Paul Martin, the Betty Betty Joe from the VFW. The one where they died. B J yeah. Booker. The, okay, yes. so the BJ, first your grandma. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, the first one they were attacked, but nobody died. The second one. This uh, the third one because the second there was a guy died. found with nothing in his vag. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what right, she right. said is, is that they pulled up behind the car. Sure. And I don't think that Paul or Betty Jo would have been alarmed because, like, the lane was packed with cars of people necking. Packing. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so they wouldn't have been immediately alarmed necking. at the thing. But what happened was, is that he got out and he was like talking to them or whatever, and then he like shot Paul twice. Sure. And then but she it was weird because she called Paul a little boy and then she called Betty Joe a little girl. Oh, I mean, I guess 15. they were little. Yeah, they're small. But it's like weird that she said that. Then she said that he took Betty Joe and put her in the car. They drove a mile north. He 
went with I mean, her. Kind of adds up, right? Yeah. Yeah. He went with her in the woods, and then they disappeared. And then she came back with him. They got back in the car. They drove back south, and they saw that Paul was crawling across the road. Hold on, back up. What's what's the thought process of? So she's fine with her guy going with this kidnapped yeah, girl into the woods, know, and then they come back, and they're like, that he, he couldn't get it up. What a great picnic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are cases like that. Um, like, what's his name? Um, Betty Fu- or, um, Ann Fugate and Charles Starkweather. Have you ever heard of that? No. Um, um, Stephen King based a lot of some books on that, but it, he was from the 1950s. It's almost like where the woman is like almost enthralled to be with the guy that they kind of like overlook it last is, podcast is, just did a thing on them is, okay that's how you know <clears throat> you may know their name last is, this, podcast. is this that thing where like the guy is so aggressive but as long as the aggression's going towards other not people her, yeah. she's like oh yeah, yeah. like yeah. he's okay. sweet to her but he's like kind of vicious you know about it Jake. sure okay all right that's it's, it's weird to me but okay. it, yeah there is like a psychological sure. thing or whatever but so anyways, she can she can Cooperate, cooperate. Yes, the way that the previous suicide note guy couldn't. Yes, because he he had, he claimed that he killed these people, but didn't have yes. the. Not, but this girl does. Yes, because okay. one thing is that she mentioned that when he was first robbing Paul, so that she's he duty threw, free. He threw the book, the date book that the cops found. Okay. And then when they came back to Paul, like when he was crawling across the road, he gave him a little double tap. And so that substantiates the fact that Paul was shot four times. Okay. Then he took Betty a mile south and then they went into the woods. They were in the woods for a while. And then he came back to the car by himself with a saxophone thing. Never a good sign. Now he was going to pawn this sax but then he threw it over a fence because he thought it would be too hot. Probably the smart move. And the saxophone was found right where she said it would be. Okay so there you go. So this is this is So things are coming together. Yeah. Okay. The other thing I damn you. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is he's a size nine. Ah there you go. It was t- Small there, socks. There was trouble a tiny foot. So. <laughs> he owned a twenty two. Okay. He stole a thirty two from his father, stepfather. Okay. But he said that he couldn't show where it was because he pawned it. So the like the weapon was never found. Sure. So, so this is most likely exactly the person who did it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Then, oh, okay. I was wondering if this would remain like unsolved or like creepy or something like that. No, <laughs> not well, confirmed. It kind of is. It, it is. It's unsolved, but it's, it's like unsolved. not conf- it. But it's like most likely s- so many like cr- circumstantial hint things. Hinted, hint, hint. Okay, so, so do you remember when we did Joseph Calendar? And oh, the he shoemaker. Had, yeah, yeah, the, the shoemaker, and he had yeah. the shirt that was yeah. like from the laundry thing that had the mark, and that like that's how they found him. Sure. Well, he had a shirt that said Stark on it, which means it was probably from the Virgil Stark scene. Sure, oh, I thought it was from like. Iron Man. Tony Stark. Yeah. Yeah. But so the shirt (laughs) was sent to the FBI and they found out that it had brown hair, which Virgil had, and then metallic slag, which would be from uh, Wilder would have metallic slag. There you go. There you go. So but the police said (laughs) in their reports, it's funny that you guys were saying this earlier, but they said her bread isn't brown. Her elevator doesn't go to the top. Her elevator doesn't go to the top. Oh, I thought that meant she was a virgin. No, it means that she's a little, (laughs) you know, light on her feet. The first one. I still don't get it. Like, she's kind of stupid is what they're saying, but they're saying it's southern speech. I guess my bread isn't brown either. (laughs) That's like, her bread isn't brown. I'm like, oh, she's been fucked. (laughs) <laughs> you know, but but if you're like, what is it? elevator doesn't go to the top? That's the same as like she's two cards short of a deck. You know, one fry like short of a stupid. happy meal. Yeah, uh, yeah, she's unleavened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye would hate her. <laughs> oh, wait, no, love her because she's unleavened. Never mind. <laughs> okay, exactly. <laughs> so. so, her brother was freaking out about taking his lady to the lovers' lane, and Peggy told him, "If you knew what I knew, you wouldn't be afraid." Like, that she knew who the... I guess alluding that she knew who the Phantom was. Sure. So, the weird thing, too, is that Ewell bragged to his co-workers that he was with Peggy in the car, and a cop stopped behind him and said, hey, you guys should move along because the Phantom could come out. 
Oh, that does seem fun if you're the Phantom. He, you're yeah. Like, Ooh. But there's a, <laughs> but there's like a double fun thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, officer. <laughs> because we'll not only out. did she say he's the Phantom, but two, if the cop would run the license plate, he would have realized it was a stolen car. Well, how are you going to run the license plate? That's a lot of radio work back then. Yeah, for that's, real. That's not as casual as it is nowadays. I've, I've played L.A. Noir. Oh, know? yeah. I know what you're like, talking about. Yeah. Like, like just, just let him lie kill. Lie detected. Let him, let him, <laughs> let him kill her. It's less paperwork. And I think that, too, that he got away with what he did, because with the police anyway, because he was using Peggy as a cover. Like, obviously, it's not the Phantom, because he has a woman with him. That's a good point. Yeah. Because when they're profiling, back when they said, in the profile, they didn't mention, like, probably with a woman. They mentioned, yeah. like, white loser. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, they did. Yeah. Well, someone had to cut those potato sack holes. That's true. <laughs> so when they ran his criminal record, it goes as follows. Burglary, grand theft auto, grand larceny, counterfeiting, kidnapping, racketeering, assaults. Pillowcase cutting. Violation yeah. of parole. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Textile of violating. When, literally, <laughs> when they arrested him for the car theft, he said, this is more about the car, isn't it? And they're like, what do you mean? And he goes, let's not joke around. We both know what we're talking about. So he like basically told the cops, like, it's me. I'm the Phantom. In that voice? Well, I don't <laughs> That's know. That's not how I pictured it. I'm the Phantom. So anyways. but Hold he on. Do Yule's voice, please. I'm the Phantom. So this was the killer. <laughs> so well, he they, he alluded to the fact that he would never admit to it. So they had this like super good idea to give him truth serum, which is sodium pentothal. pentothal. Yeah, that's oh, like yeah. video game shit. But they, <laughs> that doesn't work. Yeah. Well, they accidentally OD'd him by oh. mistake. By mistake. By mistake. Bye. Like a charm. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so basically, he ended up passing out, being in the hospital for a while. <laughs> Do you uh, think you're going to die? Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> like, listen, I like, this is that old adage, the truth shall set you free. <laughs> so, <laughs> sign me up, man. I got some things to confess. <laughs> so because the, there's crimes on both sides of the border, each state could take their bite, so to speak. Sure. Well, Texas had a Habitual Crimes Act that was just passed, and it's sure. kind of like if you keep doing even minor like felonies like this, then you yeah, could you be- keep doing minors? Well, <laughs> yeah. You can be in prison. You can get a life sentence. Sure. Yeah. Chris Which Hansen's is like six like... years in Texas <laughs> because they kill you. So, <laughs> so. they were trying to attempt to extradite him to Texas because they figured even if they just get him on the car theft alone, they could get him on the Habitual Crimes Act and he would spend the rest of his life in prison, thereby sure. eradicating the phantom killer. Arkansas was like, you know what? We could just OD him. And- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we could keep giving him drugs until he tells us the truth. At the, <laughs> so. at the exact same time, he was trying to move to the Texas side because Arkansas had the death penalty and he didn't want the death penalty. He didn't want to ride the lightning? No. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's exactly With it. A dry the sponge. <laughs> so, so he tried to move to Texas. <laughs> they tried to move into Texas. He moved to Texas. He got convicted on all those car thefts and got a life sentence. So sure. you think? Oh, so you think? Oh, dust your hands off. He's in prison for the rest of his life, right? No, he probably got out, right? No, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Because the local law enforcement that had like all the evidence against him, like the firsthand evidence. Well, they were in a shootout that December and they got killed. I'm confused. Like the the local law enforcement that had the first person interaction with both the victim and the killers. Okay. Or killer, I should say. They were shot and killed so they can no longer testify. Hmm. Yeah, Texas loophole. Yeah, the poop hole loophole. Yeah, they, whoa. They didn't have like a Ouija board? <laughs> I, I guess not. Yeah. All right. I guess they don't use that in the Bible Belt. But anyways, so then- and the the judge was like super I'd like to call old. this in a planchette. <laughs> so when he ended up filing an appeal like in the 1970s, there's no one to speak against him. So he got released. Yeah. Well. On a texicality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hold on. He probably got. <laughs> okay. He just spit all over me. <laughs> That was, a, that was prickly pear, baby. <laughs> he probably got found not guilty of Texicality. <laughs> Line. <laughs> baby. <laughs> How's that prickly pear? It's good. I like it. 
Yeah. It's got a, it's got a, something I can't quite put my uh, finger on. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sorrow. Babies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's fine. Okay. So when he got, they released Rest him. in pieces. <laughs> and he was stealing cars. So he got arrested immediately after he got released because he couldn't be good. Well, you know. They released him eight years later. And he did the same thing. And now he's in his 70s and he's still doing the stupid crap that he was getting arrested for when he was 17. He's institutionalized. Brooks was here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. Like jaywalking and like <laughs> he's in his thought about shooting the manager. So. <laughs> I love that part. OK, so anyways, he ended up just dying when they finally released him in 1994 in a like a old folks home, like a retirement facility, like a. What do you call those places? A nursing home. There you go. A nursing home. Yeah. I got there. And everyone hated him, so they just donated his body to medical science for a cadaver. And, you know, isn't that body farm thing in Texas? I was just imagining that he was there. I, I'm fine with I would be totally down with having my body done yeah. to a tech. It's kind of an inauspicious end to you know, inauspicious. Such a, such don't a, be inauspicious. I mean, okay. No, I'm saying don't such be a, auspicious. Don't be auspicious. Don't be auspicious. Don't be I'm trying. Auspicious. I'm trying not to be. <laughs> so. In 1976, there was a movie release called The Town That Dreaded Sundown. That doesn't even make sense. I hate it that title. Like a, the Town That Dreaded Sundown. Dude, that sounds like a fucking vampire movie that I would watch. <laughs> And as twenty eight days, that's later. fucking like from dusk till dawn prequel. Like it's what that the cock belt. <laughs> this is like kind of my shout out to listener C because he made me watch things killing, and it's like oh. definitely <laughs> down. The, it's the same you just genre. Got stuffed. Listen, it's the same genre. It's listener Chris. Okay. And- <laughs> He is 100% right. You should watch Thanks Killing. It is a fantastic family film. I was actually just watching about that, uh, or uh, just talking about that to somebody, and yeah. that is a terrible movie. It's so terrible, and so is this movie. It, it's so Thanks terrible. Killing. It, We're just, just in time for it. It's yeah. it's so terrible that I, I do wonder, like, how, like, I think there could be a spinoff podcast. How does this get funded? How, th- 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 like, <laughs> somebody who, with a sock who puppet cut the check and, and, like, 15 gallons of for blood? For Thanks Killing. So, I know exactly. Anyways, thank you. Okay, thank so you, Chris. like for instance, in this movie, when it's Betty Joe's murder with the sax, they switch the sax for the trombone. DJ sex murder. Then, the killer with the pillowcase ties her to a tree, and then he plays the trombone, which there's a knife at the end of the trombone. So every time you know, like the thing goes <laughs> out, it yeah. stabs her. Yeah. I mean, how ridiculous is this? You're gonna hit that high G note and kill her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, the G spot. Wanna, wanna. <laughs> so, so, in conclusion, I think it could be Ewell Sweeney or it could be the Zodiac because it's very similar. I think it's 100% It is similar, Yule. but I, it's got to be Yule. Yeah. If anything, well, <laughs> You will voice. be surprised. Yeah. Like, I think Yule uh, definitely was the killer in this incident. Maybe there was a Yule tide that inspired the Zodiac <laughs> killer. Some sort of carol. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> but it, it did have notes of, like, the Zodiac killer inside the story. Where if I, I believe like it was, it, it, it was like thing. he attacked, you know, couples, you know, like exactly. picnicking and stuff like that. So Creepy. I had a great time in this episode. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, the prickly pears got me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, listener TJ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're burning our vagina candle. It literally is still at the top. Can can I Two ask you a later. personal question? Do you still smell Do you it? Smell this? No. Okay, Thank so you. it was me then the whole time. The first, the last episode when yeah. you were like, I told Jake I go. She sat there and goes, it smells like old sour milk. I'm like, is it does. It did. Me? Like maybe it was. Dude, I was, I was just wondering if it's me the whole it, time. It confused me. I burnt my nose trying to smell it. I was like. I think, it smelled like I think old I just, no. It smelled like roasted nose hairs to me because yeah, I was like leaning so close to exactly, it. Exactly, that's wax with a sticker on it. <laughs> I think we got we got Gwyneth on this one. We there, got there was Gwyneth nothing in the box. Yeah, there's nothing in the box. <laughs> I think that we got Gwyneth we got, as Madonna. Here's the thing: like this is probably my fault for going cheap. I'll get the real one. Don't. I'll, I'll get. I'll get don't the do seventy-five it. dollar. Don't do you it. You know the the. Au I don't jus. need to smell fresh linen. Yeah, <laughs> I don't need to smell what Tony Stark's pad. dick smells much, like. <laughs> how much was this one? Thirty-eight. It was half. <laughs> Thirty-eight for a non-smelling candle. Dude, I could have gotten you that for six bucks at the at the. I, t- I could have got you that for a dollar at Listen, the dollar tree. I had fun with it, but I'm thinking it's a false positive. I gotta go to the real one. 
I gotta, I gotta, bonita. I gotta get a piece of Gwyneth. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Honestly, that's the kind of shit that gets you a fucking Yule fucking. <laughs> that's fine. You will be prosecuted. Yeah. To the like, I, I think at this point, Gwyneth should pay people to smell her pussy. Like, <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, uh, <laughs> thank you very much for listening to our super spooky you, you episode. You gave me a prickly pear baby. Yeah, you I gave did. Me liquor. No, this TJ, is your did. fault. <laughs> so anyway, thank you very much for listening to our super spooky episode. This was a super spooky 90, episode. Ninety nine A. And up next, we got episode one hundred. I'm super pumped for that. So we got to do something I'm silly. Super excited too. Actually. Um, I think uh, I've got a couple uh, dicks up my sleeve or whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure the. I don't know if that's the old adage. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, my name is uh, Jake Lobos. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm Renee. You will be surprised how much you like this episode. Hey, right? all right. <laughs> and I'm Adam Las the Wolves Lobos. <laughs> 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 Riley. <laughs> What's Spanish for the pack? <laughs> <laughs> El Paco. <laughs> God damn it, Spanish. First our jobs, okay, now I'm our not words. with them. I'm not with them. <laughs> Bader boners. Bader boners. <laughs> Wrong of chlamydia. <laughs> you met me at a very strange time in my life.